During this video presentation, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to assemble and disassemble the local anesthetic self-aspirating syringe. This is a procedure that you do need to be able to perform safely and efficiently. So as we walk through the procedure today, you might want to have the evaluation sheet that we use during preclinical practice. It gives you all of the steps of the procedure. As we go through the video, if you have any questions or there are terms that you do not understand, then I encourage you to write these in the area below, the skill steps, and then bring this into preclinic practice so that you can ask your questions. You can talk to one of the clinicians and just verify the information. This is also something that as you're looking at the video for later use, again, always have it out with you so you can follow along and that way you're going to learn the skill steps a little bit faster. So one of the first things that we do, and it's the first skill step on the sheet, is to come into our area, we wash our hands, and we have to assemble the armamentarium. I've already done that, so I came in, washed my hands, and I did assemble everything that I needed for this particular procedure. So I'm going to identify the different parts of the tray setup that we have, and I encourage you to write down as I give you um, the elements of the procedure, uh, tray setup, if you can just write that down on your evaluation sheet so you have that for a good reference. We are focusing on the self-aspirating syringe, so you do want to be able to differentiate between an aspirating and a self-aspirating. The self-aspirating one is the, the um, syringe that has a piston without a harpoon on the end of it. So the aspirating syringe has a harpoon, the self-aspirating syringe does not have a harpoon. So please make sure that you appreciate the difference and you can select the correct syringe. I have an anesthetic carpule. The operator who is going to be giving the injection should determine which anesthetic is going to be selected for the procedure. And it's going to be in part dependent on the type of procedure being performed and the length of the procedure, but also on the client's health history, whether there are any contraindications to particular kinds of anesthetic. We have a disposable needle, and there are different lengths of needles and different gauges of needles. So again, the operator may have a, a particular preference. Um, it will in part depend on which arch they're going to be giving the injection in and which site in that arch they'll be giving the injection. So you'll want to find out from the operator what type of needle that they would prefer on the tray. I have a cotton tip applicator with topical anesthetic already dispensed on it, just a small amount on the end of the cotton tip applicator. And I've got two 2x2 two two gauss squares. One is going to be used to rest the cotton tip applicator on. The other one is going to be used to wipe the mucosal tissues prior to placing the topical. I've got an alcohol wipe. And here is my container for the topical anesthetic gel. So that is the armamentarium for the procedure. Now we're ready to put our protective equipment on. And the first thing that we want to do is position our protective eyewear. So for this procedure, we only need our protective eyewear and our exam gloves. Now prior to positioning my exam gloves, I'm going to, I would wash my hands and then I'm going to place my exam gloves on. So now that we have our protective equipment in place, we're ready to actually start the procedure. The first thing that I do want to do is ensure that the local anesthetic syringe um, is intact, meaning that the four parts that I identify to you are all tight. I have the thumb ring here. It can get uh, loose with repeated use, so I'm going to hold onto the piston and make sure that the thumb ring is tight. The finger grip right here, it also can get loose, so I want to tighten that. The piston, there's a little knob at the end of the piston and I want to make sure it's also tight. And then at the very end we have a threaded part which is the needle adapter and I want to ensure that it is also tight. Now those are the four parts that we have to check with this particular syringe. There are other types of self-aspirating syringes on the market and you may find that you don't actually have to check those four areas. But for the procedure in our clinic, that is what you're going to be demonstrating to us. And we want you to be able to identify the four parts and demonstrate that you are tightening those four areas. So the thumb ring, the finger grip, the piston and the needle adapter. With respect to our anesthetic carpule, of course you want to make sure that you check the type of anesthetic, confirm that it is the correct anesthetic. 
You also want to check the expiration date and the expiration for this one is 1-13 and that means January 2013. So we know that we can use this anesthetic. So you're going to confirm the date with the clinician as you go through the procedure. Some other things that we will check with respect to our carpule. We've got a glass carpule so when we look in the, in the carpule we can see that the solution is nice and clear and we don't see any particulate floating around in the carpule. You also want to look for bubbles. If there is a pea-sized um, bubble in the carpule, you would need to discard it. If you see very small bubbles, about a millimeter, those are okay. Check the aluminum cap at the very end, and we have a rubber diaphragm there. We want to make sure that there are no holes in that rubber diaphragm. And then the other end, we have the rubber stopper. It is sitting in about a millimeter from the end of the carpule. So if you see that the rubber stopper is protruding beyond the end of the carpule or it has been pushed in to the carpule, then you would discard it and select another carpule. In terms of our needle, we have a seal around the needle that we want to ensure is intact. So just gently twist either end and if the seal has been broken it will be very evident if you gently twist either end. So I can confirm that the seal on this particular needle is intact. So as, you're, as you are checking these items you will be confirming with the clinician that everything is intact. So I'm going to take my alcohol wipe now and just wipe down the ends of the carpule, both the rubber diaphragm end and the rubber stopper end. And just place the alcohol wipe back into the package when you're finished with it, just to keep it organized on your tray. Now I'm going to place the carpule into the syringe and I'm going to hold the syringe in a palm grasp and pull the thumb ring out of the way so that I open up the barrel. When I position the carpule, the rubber stopper end is going to go next to the piston. So I will position this and release the thumb ring so that I have now positioned the carpule. I want to attach the needle to the syringe so I first have to break the seal so just twist the ends in opposite directions to one another to break that seal and gently loosen the protective cap so that it falls out onto the tray. I'm going to insert the needle and holding firmly at the hub of the needle I'm going to attach that needle to the syringe, making sure that there is no gap between the needle and the syringe. I want to test the syringe before I, I place it in the static zone for the operator to use. So I'm going to, again, holding it in a palm grasp, using my forefinger and thumb, I'm just gently going to wiggle the needle guard so it becomes loose and then allow it to drop on the tray. And I will using your one hand scoop technique and then we will now do the disassembly of this. So we've got a capped needle, so I have to remove the needle from the syringe. Be very careful at this point. Now we have a contaminated needle. It's very important that when we try to remove the needle that we do not take off the needle guard. So I'm going to hold this very firmly at the hub and remove this and I'm protecting myself. If the needle guard were to come off, I'm really at no risk of harming myself because I've got my hand well away from that part of the needle. So I'm going to loosen this from the syringe and using my one hand scoop I'm going to scoop the other end, the cartridge penetration end and now I have recapped the needle using a one hand scoop for both parts of that needle. I'm going to remove the carpule and both of those can go into our sharps container. The syringe is going to go in for sterilization, so it will be taken to the central sterilizing room. The 2 by 2 gauze squares in the cotton tip applicator and our alcohol wipe can all be disposed of in the regular waste, and we would wipe down our topical anesthetic and put that away. So that is the procedure for assembling and disassembling the local anesthetic self-aspirating syringe, and I do encourage you to watch the video, go through the evaluation sheet, Write down any questions and make sure that you take the time to practice the skill during your preclinic sessions.